This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Erin Lee with me, the Executive Director of our Lanark County Interval House, and along with her is Emma Kinsman, the Communication and Volunteer Coordinator. Welcome back. It's been a while since I've been able to talk to you ladies. Happy Thanks to be here. Thank you for having us. All right. Let's start, first start talking about how, how is everything going at the, the Interval House, Erin? Maybe you can give us a little uh, rundown of how everything's going. Uh, I would say that things, it, it's really hard to capture what's going well, right? Because by saying that we're full, it uh, would suggest that things are not going well in people's lives. But as it relates to the agency, we are, uh, our space at the shelter and our emergency first stage shelter uh, is really busy. We're actually over full. Um, both our second stage and our beyond second stage housing programs are really doing well. Uh, women are really flourishing um, and those programs uh, continue to have a wait list um, you know staffing wise and agency wise I think that uh, we continue to evolve and we continue to engage with our community and our governments uh, to try and create change and uh, I'm happy to report that uh, the team is doing well and and uh, they're amazing formidable women who provide service here. And maybe, Emma, we can talk a little bit about, you know, we still have to be careful with COVID. We still have to be careful with, uh, you know, guidelines, that sort of thing. But it's gotten so much better, too, because uh, as so many of our conversations in the past few years was wrapped around COVID and, and how things were going. And you're the volunteer coordinator. How is that going with, uh, you know, uh, being able to get volunteers out now that COVID's not gone, but... There's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's nice and bright. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's certainly a lot easier. Um, I think our volunteers at the store are really appreciating it at our Ask It Is New store. Um, they don't have to worry so much about um, restrictions and things like that. Um, sorry about my phone. <laughs> oh, everything's fine. Seems okay here. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're really excited. Our volunteer, we're, we've had such an influx of volunteers in the last three years. I think COVID made everybody really want to give back to their community. And um, we're really excited this week. We get to have our first volunteer appreciation event since COVID. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting all of our volunteers together. And um, yeah, we certainly have no shortage of generous people in the community who are willing to give their time to us, which is great. That's right. And you have to celebrate them. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yes. Now, I, originally, I, I got a hold of you because I, I I saw the the posting going up about the Smith Falls Pebble Mosaic unveiling because it was supposed to happen in the fall and it got postponed till now too so I'm really excited about that maybe you can speak a little bit about let's let's start talking about how it was built and how it was put together maybe Aaron you can talk a little bit about that uh, sure um, Lanark County Interval and Community Support has worked with um, RDA uh, Redefine Arts uh, for several years now and we've created pebble mosaics that are really designed by the community for the community rooted in reflections and thoughts on gender-based violence and so our first one was in carlton place and then we did one in elmont and the idea is really it's a process right where we invite community to come and talk about if we had a mosaic a pebble mosaic that was in our community, what would you want it to say? What are the messages that we want to give people who are survivors of, who are dealing with, who are living with issues related to gender-based violence? And so uh, it's been really a great process to engage people in our community from all kind of areas of, of, of our community. Nobody has to self-identify in any one particular way. They have an interest in in giving to their community and participating in something that will be um, an installed permanent um, art feature in their community so uh, we did carlton place we did almont and then we embarked on the one that's being created for smith's falls um, and again very interesting right because we've done this since before uh, the pandemic was declared and all the way through uh, we've worked alongside RDA so we've had to do some modifications and have some virtual experiences and and then also be able to gather people safely to build the mosaic and our Smith Falls mosaic is a very unique and beautifully inspired uh, mosaic uh, but unfortunately we couldn't install it last year because the town of Smith Falls is doing lots of renovations and building and work in the town. Um, and the ideal space for the mosaic to live is in the new uh, town square. 
Um, and unfortunately, you know, uh, in terms of realities with building schedules and stuff, uh, it wasn't prepared for last year. So uh, we have waited and engaged with the town and, and we're happy to report that the mosaic is, is being installed uh, in the month of May. Um, and we're going to, we invite everybody to come out uh, to the mosaic. It's at May, May 18th. Uh, at 6 p.m. and it's at what is known now to be the new town square which is really between the library um, and town hall uh, in Smith's Falls and kind of across in a way across from the Tim one of the Tim Hortons and uh, we're going to have a variety of speakers and and presentations to unveil uh, this permanent uh, art mosaic, uh, pebble mosaic in the community. And we really hope that people will gather and reflect and um, feel inspired to uh, speak their truth, to walk their path, to uh, take action uh, and to be engaged. Absolutely. And maybe Emma, can you talk a little bit about the, the day uh, that was here in Smith Falls when, when people came out to put the, the mosaic together? I really enjoyed that. Like there were, people were coming out <laughs> and uh, they, they're gonna know that they were part of this. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the really cool things about this project is the entire thing is designed and built by community members. So we had um, a couple of virtual uh, meetings and then we had a couple of in-person meetings where the community came together and designed the mosaic and then kind of the artists go away and take all of the elements that the community comes up with and puts it into several different designs and then we voted on them and kind of did a bit of a hodgepodge of different designs until we came up with one that was unique to Smith Falls and represented the community and it's really beautiful. And then we had two days last summer where community members came and were able to put the stones into the mosaic. And I think that's a really special time for everyone because, you know, it's really nice to be able to know that you actually had something to do with that mosaic. And something special about the mosaic is on some of the stones, people have written messages of hope or, um, um, the names of some of the um, people that were taken too soon by violence in our community. So you won't be able to see that when the mosaic is built, but the people that wrote those messages will always know that they're there. And the mosaic is such a good symbol of remembrance and hope for a world with, without violence that it's nice to know that those little names and messages are kind of a contributing part of the mosaic. That's right. That's right. And I really walked away from it that day knowing that so many people were that took part of it knowing that they were part of it. So it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be a great memory piece and it's going to be there historically for a long time. So mm -hmm. you've got other events going on through May too. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about that too. Sure. Um, I, I would like to suggest that if people are interested, uh, what now Lanark County uh, is hosting a women's conference. So that means that the conference is focused on uh, women's issues. All genders are invited to sign up and to get a ticket at Tickets, Please. It's $40. It's Saturday, May the 6th. And there are an assortment and a variety of workshops, including having Pam Cross and Kirsten Mercer come and talk about learnings from the Renfrew Inquest. Uh, there is a piece on um, trafficking and the effects of trafficking, uh, which I think is really interesting for our community. Resilience, uh, climate action, and women's roles. Um, and I think it's really about um, uplifting and amplifying the learning and the inspiration and the action that women can take when they're united, but also to be unpacking some of the barriers and some of the issues that impact women in our community. And that is May the 8th, I'm uh, sorry, May the 6th at the Al Almont Civitan Hall. Tickets on ticketsplease.ca and it's $40 for that day. And that includes uh, your morning snack as well as your lunch. And that goes from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. that day. Okay. Maybe I'll look to Emma. Did you want to talk about the Leonard County Community Justice or would you like to talk about the banner? 
Sure, I can talk about the banner. So May is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So all month long, we'll be doing different things on our social media to um, support survivors and to maybe give some tips and information to community members. But something that we started doing last year is we paired up with uh, a group in Renfrew County, We Believe Survivors, and um, we got this banner made. And last year, it hung in Perth. But this year, um, we're, we have a lot of events coming up in Smith Falls, so we thought Smith Falls would be a great place. So our banner will be hung for the month of May on the uh, community center in Smith Falls. And it's just a really great way to show the, you know, survivors of sexual assault in our community, that the whole community supports them and we believe them. And that's the biggest thing that you can do for survivors of sexual assault is just to believe them and listen to their stories and um, show that we care. So I think it's really nice um, to have that banner there. So I'm sure you'll see it if you're driving around in Smith Falls. Um, and I think that's, it's really great. It's, um, I think it's a nice way to show community members that we care about them. Absolutely, and uh, and and we do for sure. And it's it's like you say, and and we need you to come back. And you were talking about uh, learning tips and everything. Maybe next time we talk, we can talk about some of those tips and share them yeah, with, with the people that are listeners. That would be awesome. That mm -hmm. would be awesome. Sure. And I believe you had another event in uh, in May as yes, well. Yes, uh, rounding out May, um, and also in the town of Smith Falls, uh, we will be uh, we're working in partnership with Lanark County Community Justice. Um, and we're having a town a town hall discussion. Uh, it, we are hoping that we'll be able to be mostly outside, but it depends on the weather. It will be on May the 24th, and it's from 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. It is also at the, the community center at 71 Cornelia Street West in Smith Falls. It is on our social media. So have a look if you'd like to register, but it's really talking about inquest recommendation number nine, which speaks to the, the notion of how do we take the concepts of restorative practice and how can we use that in resolutions around intimate partner violence? And you know, when the recommendations came out of which there are 86, I would say that Leonard County has taken a very active role in trying to move those recommendations forward and keep them in the forefront. And so Leonard County Community Justice and Leonard County Interval House and Community Support, we are partnering on this event um, that's being uh, partially funded by the Department of Justice. Um, and we're inviting everybody to come out to a town hall discussion. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what people think would work, what people think won't work. Um, and let's think about how do we implement uh, this kind of recommendation in our community. So that again is May the 24th from 3 to 6.30 p.m. also being hosted in the town of Smith Falls. I really like these town hall discussions as, as you put them too because it brings people out, pe people that you know have uh, maybe they're a survivor themselves. They're going to be, you know, amongst others. There, there's people that uh, know somebody that's a survivor. They're going to be amongst uh, other people that have similarity. And, and people who want to come out and help, they're going to be amongst these people. So I, I think those, those kind of events that you're putting on are amazing. I think it's really critical for community to be united. Mm -hmm. I think that what we're learning, especially in response to the recommendations, um, is that rural communities are ready. Uh, they're stepping up, they're gathering, they want to take action, they want to understand, they want to be part of solutions. And so community uniting and bringing people together through, you know, whether it's an art mosaic or it's a town hall discussion, uh, it's a banner that prompts some conversation, it's coming out on a Saturday to listen to some speakers. It's really about us trying to diversify the opportunities for community to be engaged in the way that feels most comfortable. And I like the way you put it. People want to understand and they want to be part of the resolution. I guess that's what I was trying to say. People want to be part of the resolution. That's why they come out to these things and they want to help and, and yeah. understand. For sure. And education is a really important factor yes. when we think about knowledge. Knowledge is power. And if we if we have some knowledge and, and some tips, as, as we talked about earlier in some a new kind of understanding of how systems work and how systems don't work, then we're empowered to actually be able to do something about that or to do a little bit more research or to have a conversation over lunch uh, with your family. But did you know? Right. Uh, 
Um, and so we just keep building education and continuing to have dialogue. And, and I think that that's a critical, critical piece about all of us being part of the solutions in our community. Well, I appreciate you coming here and, and on FYI and sharing all your time and your expertise. And, and uh, we, we, we want to help. We want to get the word out there. So I always thank you for your time for coming here and, and everything you do, too. So May's a busy month. You've got June is a busy month as well, too. So we need you to come back and we'll talk more about that. But in the meantime, how do people get a hold of you? You can find us on social media, Lanark County Interval House, on Facebook and Instagram. And you can find us at our website, www.lcih.org. And you're, you're putting stuff on your Facebook page almost daily. I mean, it's wonderful because you're always updating and keeping people informed. So I appreciate that too. So once again, with me, Aaron Lee, the Executive Director, and I've got Emma Kinsman, the Communication and Volunteer Coordinator of our Lanark County Interval House. Thanks for joining us today, ladies. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you.